Mamba, a stage play by Gary Davis. McGivney is a 55 year old Irishman. He is dressed in a plasticized coat and wears rubber gloves. He moves slowly and with great precision. Celia is a 70 year old English lady. She wears a dressing gown and does not move from her armchair. On a side table, there is a selection of prescription drugs, a table lamp and a mobile phone. There is a crucifix on the wall. Mac enters the darkened sitting room using a pencil torch. Who's there? Well, it's you. You think? I've been expecting you. Is that right? Mac, that notices, right? Ce Mac notices Celia's mobile phone on the side table and moves it out of reach. Is that right? It was I who hired you, Mr. McGivney. You're Mr. Smith. A departmental nom de plume. You must have known it was something of the sort. I figured as much. These days I'm mostly spouses and business partners. Nine times out of ten, you are the one. GCHQ workers, weapons inspectors, MOD officials. Make it look like an accident. To tell the truth, I was always looked forward to your commissions. You was always a challenge. Why did you use me? Deniability. And if you ever did become a problem... You'd make it look like an accident. You needn't have worried. I won't spend another day in a British prison. I feel very much the same about the NHS. Oh, you want me to? I can't do it myself. A mortal sin, is it? Don't you believe in God? Never really cared that much. Yet you killed in his name? Ah, uh, no. I wouldn't want to blame him for that. It was war. I was a soldier. He had nothing to do with it. Max starts reading the labels of the pills on the table. This is powerful stuff. Oh, they give it different names, but basically it's all heroin. Quite rock and roll for a civil servant, don't you think? Drugs took the best of them, sure enough. I believe Jim Morrison was heart failure. Hendrix was alcohol and barbiturates, but respiratory failure was on the death certificate. You're a fan? Not especially. It just infuriates me when things are wrongly ascribed. Could I ask you a favour, do you think? Ask away. In the past, you've covered your tracks by setting fires. I understand it destroys evidence, and that must be uppermost in your thoughts, but... There are some keepsakes here. I'd hope to need to my friends. Well, so long as you cooperate, don't do anything stupid. Oh, you have my assurance. I have a port fitted if you're thinking about administering an overdose. That's useful to know. Although anyone familiar with my convictions would know I could never commit suicide. I might smash my skull and make it look like a robbery. Is there a lot of that that goes on around here? I'd be the first in the locality. But please don't let me inhibit you. You have my permission to be creative. Mac walks around the room looking at items and assessing their potential as murder weapons, lifting a cushion and testing its weight. Exactly how many people have you killed? Oh, now that's a hell of a question. I'm sorry. You're quite right. It really isn't any of my business. Between ourselves, your home office says there were 532 murders last year. Five of that was me. So many? Well, if you want it done right. There's fellas that kill your uncle for the beer money. To judge from our own payments to you, it's an extremely profitable career. And I don't pay none of that income tax, neither. Well... I must say it feels comforting to be in the hands of a professional, so to speak. For some reason, I find you an easy person to talk to. Oh, you'd be the first to ever say that. My ex said I had no empathy. None. Maybe you've changed. I doubt it. Well, if you're ready. I am. 
so considerate of my position. I feel I should warn you. Of what? My ex-employers always seem to find me difficult, by which they meant I didn't share their paranoia. Secrets are their world. They think everyone is as obsessed as they are. And why is that my problem? When they've finished searching the house and found the open safe, they'll assume someone has emptied it. And you'll be the first person, the last person to have seen me alive. We'll need to tie up loose ends. Which would be myself. What sort of secrets are we talking? Connections. Connections? A journalist falls through a balcony. Cabinet minister resigns to spend more time with his family. A British company wins an arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Connections. And that was what you did for a living. Until ill health and the prospect of internal damnation forced my retirement. I'm um, under no illusions as to my culpability. Suffice to say that I have confessed my sins and been granted absolution. Saw it, as my nephews would say. Tell me, how does someone get into your business? What? Become an assassin, a hired killer, a hitman. Ah, don't we all get the lies we deserve? Right. It happens quite insidiously. You think? They just gave me a name and a pistol, and when the war was over, it was the only thing I knew how to do. Do you never feel guilt or remorse? Would I have been able to keep doing it if I had? So you're not appalled at what you've become? Well, there's no use pretending I'm anything else. I was, once. So, you'd better do your job, hadn't you? Damned if I do. Damned if I don't. Of course, the department is not your biggest problem. It isn't. Oh, there's the people who committed the original acts. The people we protect. Once they believe their deeds may become common currency, they'll panic. They'll come after you as well. And how will they know it's me? It's in nobody's interest to protect your identity, I'm afraid. Well, I can make a run for it. Have a passport? Several. If you make it out of the country, you stand a chance. Of what? Dying elsewhere? I fear your prognosis is much the same as mine. Well, <laughs> if that's all there is, I always fancy to look at Brazil. One hell of a country, I hear. Maybe I'll go there for the carnival. All them young ladies with their spangles doing the mamba. Samba. What's that? The mamba is a snake. Highly venomous and only found in Africa. Is that right? The dance is called the samba. Well, they can shake what they want. I'll not be telling them otherwise. Very liberal of you. Mac takes a step towards Celia. There might be another option. Is that so? It's a bit extreme. I've always been one for the wild side myself. What are you thinking? Blow it all wide open. Put the record straight. Get the scales back in balance. And how would I do that? Celia takes a data stick out of her dressing gown pocket and places it on the side table. Is that it? You were expecting a lever arch file? I'm not sure I gave it much thought. You can bring down governments, destroy corporations, and put hundreds into jail. You think? Max circles Celia until he stands behind her chair. If nothing else, you'll raise merry hell. I like the sound of that. You can be the instrument of his justice. You can do what all the courts, judges, investigations, and independent inquiries. Celia is shut up by Mac leaning over the back of her chair. He wraps his arm around her throat, her chin resting in the crook of his arm. He places his other hand over her mouth and pinches her nostrils closed. Celia initially struggles. That's a good girl. It won't be long now. My first... I saw her in church. She was sat with her family. We all knew her father was a brute, 
the girls walked around town with their black eyes and bruises. She'll do, I thought, and she'll do nicely. <laughs> so I took her down to the river and she came to me so easily. Will you marry me, Mickey? She said, my hands all over her, wanting it done so fiercely. <laughs> Almost there. There. That's better. Mac checks the pulse in her neck. He moves around the chair to face her again. A samba, is it? That's good to know. Mac places Celia's head in a more natural position, as if making her comfortable. Almost as an afterthought, he picks up the data stick and looks at it before slipping it in his pocket. He turns off the sidelight and exits. <laughs>